In this session, we'll discuss the new in-place upgrade option that's available when moving from Link Server to Skype for Business Server, and we'll go ahead and perform an in-place upgrade so you can see just how simplified the process now is. So the in-place upgrade option is something new that's come about with Skype for Business Server. Historically, if you were upgrading from something like Link Server 2010 or OCS, then you'd have to perform something that's referred to as a side-by-side -side or swing migration because this in-place upgrade option didn't exist. Now, a swing migration is where, if for argument's sake, we were going to upgrade from Link Server 2010 to 2013, then to perform a swing migration, we would have to stand up and provision new Link 2013 servers next to our existing 2010 ones, and then we would migrate our users and configured services across to the 2013 platform. And when we're happy that everything is working as expected and operating as it should, we then go back and retrospectively decommission the 2010 server. And that's the swing migration. Now with Skype for Business Server, we have this new in-place upgrade option available to us. It means we don't have to go through the rigmarole of provisioning new servers and platforms and migrating components across. We can have what's more akin to a true upgrade experience rather than a migration. Now that's not to say that you can't perform a swing migration to get to Skype for Business Server. There are pros and cons to an in-place upgrade and a swing migration. For example, say for argument's sake that you have an existing Link 2013 environment but it's sat on 2008 R2 underlying operating systems across all your servers. You know, perhaps it's the company's intention to make sure that you get all your operating systems up to 2012 R2. Well, if you perform an in-place upgrade, then naturally you're going to be stuck with the same operating system, even though you've upgraded the link environment and components that are sat on top of that operating system. So a swing migration would give you the opportunity to meet the company's requirements in that instance and get the link or Skype for Business platform onto 2012 R2 operating systems. Naturally, the in-place upgrade option has numerous benefits as well. We've already mentioned the fact that you don't have to stand up and provision new servers. Um, perhaps more significantly, the amount of time it takes to perform an in-place upgrade in contrast to a swing migration is significantly less. When you perform a swing migration, um, not only do you need to prepare the new environment and stand up all your new servers, but the actual migration process itself is quite laborious. There are many, many components that are involved. If you're migrating a fully mature link environment across to a new platform. So not only are you moving your users, for example, but you're also moving core park service configuration, analog configured devices, response group services, central management store. You need to reconfigure exchange unified messaging. You'll have to readdress your DHCP scope options. There are many, many things that you need to consider in a swing migration that would otherwise be taken care of by the in-place upgrade process. But hell, we're going to perform an in-place upgrade. So what do we need to be aware of? Well, first up, you need to know that an in-place upgrade can only be performed from a Link 2013 server. So there is no in-place upgrade option from Link 2010, OCS, and anything prior to Link 2013 doesn't exist. If you're coming from OCS or Link 2010, you would first need to perform the traditional swing migration to get up to Link Server 2013. And then from Link Server 2013, you can perform an in-place upgrade to get yourself onto Skype for Business Server. Now, if this isn't a problem for us and all our servers are already Link Server 2013 and we're good to go with the in-place upgrade, we need to decide which method of in-place upgrade we're going to use. And we haven't touched on these yet, but there are two types of in-place upgrade method. An offline upgrade, or a move user method upgrade. Now, technically, there's not really any difference between the two in how you go about performing the upgrade. It's more a difference in common sense and how you go about managing your users when you're upgrading your front end pools. Now, the offline method almost speaks for itself. If you're upgrading a front end pool that has users homed on it and you don't do anything with those users and you just start upgrading that pool, then naturally those users will be impacted. And when the server restarts or you stop the services on that server to perform the upgrade, the users that are homed on that server or any services that are also homed on that server, they won't be functioning correctly and they won't be able to service your user populace. Uh, so consequently, the server is offline and that's your offline in-place upgrade. In contrast, we have the move user method whereby we would move the users homed on that pool to an alternate pool while we perform an upgrade on it. This way, the users are not impacted by the service outage. They carry on working normally on their new pool. And when we're complete, we simply move those users back to their original pool. Naturally, for this move user method, you'd need to have more than one pool available. And that second pool would need to be able to accommodate all the users that you're looking to migrate on it temporarily while you perform an upgrade. 
in some instances your hand will be forced for example if you're just running a link environment that has a single standard edition server then your only option is to perform an offline in place upgrade but for companies that are running on a 24 7 basis provided you've got multiple front-end pools now we have the ability to retain this maximum uptime scenario now on the note of front-end pools it's important to acknowledge that the in place upgrade process doesn't support any kind of high availability or ha uh, that is to say if you have a front-end pool that has, for example, five servers in it, you can't perform an in-place upgrade on one of those servers under the impression that any users who are dependent on that server will be taken care of by the rest of the pool. That's not supported. And the correct way to do that would be to use the move user method where you would move all of the users on that pool away completely to a different pool. Or you would have identified a maintenance window where you can perform an offline in-place upgrade. Mixing pools isn't supported. That is to say, once you've upgraded one server in any given pool, you must go ahead and perform the upgrade on all servers in that pool. So you can't have a front end pool that consists of three servers, two of them being Skype for Business and one being Link 2013. They must all be of the same flavor. That said, Skype for Business pools can coexist with legacy Link pools, but only one type. That is to say, if you have a Skype for Business front end pool, then it's okay to have a Link 2013 front-end pool, or you could have a Link 2010 pool. What you can't have is a combination of all three pools existing in the same topology. It's a combination of any two. And that's not just limited to front-ends, that's any pool. So mediation, edge, dedicated conferencing front-end, you name it. You will need to consider what you do with your existing archiving and monitoring databases. And we'll touch on this when we go through the demonstration, but when you perform an in-place upgrade of a front-end pool, if that front-end pool is associated to archiving and monitoring instances, then if you don't do anything and you just go ahead and perform the in-place upgrade, then those back-end databases will be upgraded as well. And I imagine that this is how most people are going to roll. But be aware that you do have the option during the upgrade process to define new archiving and monitoring instances if required. Pool pairing completely supported during the upgrade process. So if you have standard edition or enterprise edition front-end pools that are paired, then leave that pool pairing relationship in place while you go ahead and perform the upgrade on the servers in those pools. If you have survivable branch appliances or survivable branch servers, SBA and SBS, associated to front-end pools and you're looking to upgrade uh, the servers in those front-end pools, then there is a little bit of legwork involved. Um, unlike pool pairing, if you have an SBA associated to a front-end pool, then that front-end pool is acting as a backup registrar for the users on that SBA. But unfortunately, you need to take down that backup registrar relationship prior to upgrading the servers on the front-end pool. Now, the only way to take down the backup registrar relationship is to actually remove the SBA or SBS from the topology and publish the topology. However, you can only remove an SBA or SBS from a topology once all the users have been vacated from it. So the sum of the parts is you need to move all your users away from your SBA or SBS, remove it from the topology, upgrade the pool or the front-end pool that that SBA is associated with. Then after that's complete, you can reintroduce the SBA or SBS back into the topology and then migrate all the users back to that appliance. If you have some sexy link room systems dotted around the bazaars and you use the LRS admin tool to monitor and manage those devices, you need to know that the existing LRS admin tool is not supported or cannot coexist with Skype for Business Server. You'll need to remove that prior to the upgrade and then apply the new LRS admin tool on completion. And finally, the upgrade order. With previous versions of Link Server, uh, there are always questions on the forums asking the order in which people should upgrade their pools, whether they do Edge first or Front End first. But Microsoft have some documented guidance this time around and they recommend upgrading from the inside out. So you start with your Front End pools and then jump over to mediation, etc pushing out to your edge pools and edge servers. And then finally, jump back in and do the pool that hosts the central management store, your CMS. That's the recommended upgrade path. Now, there are one or two other things that are more environment specific that you might need to consider when performing and planning your upgrade to Skype for Business, which I haven't mentioned here in addition to the points above. So on the link on the screen at the moment, which takes you to the planning section of upgrading to Skype for Business on the TechNet library, you can see more expansive documentation and explanation on the above points, in addition to some further reading. Enough talking, let's go ahead and perform an in-place upgrade. 
Okay, so this is our lab environment. As you can see, I've got the 2013 topology builder open. And in our lab, we've got a 2013 standard edition server with co-located mediation and persistent chat roles. And we also have a link edge server there, which is associated to our front end server. Now we're going to concentrate on upgrading this standard edition server here to Skype for business. But technically, it doesn't make any difference whether this is a standard edition server or a multi-server enterprise pool. The process is the same. You're just going to repeat it a greater number of times depending on the number of servers in the pool. So the first thing we need to do is install these Skype for Business admin tools. Now, these tools need to be installed on a server or workstation that's currently absent of any link components at all, any link binaries, etc. So I'm going to put these on a Windows 8.1 workstation. So let's jump over to that box. And from here, I'm simply going to access the Skype for Business media, I'll run setup, and let it do its thing. A nice feature with the Skype for Business installer is the ability to check for updates while you're going through the process. So this wasn't available with Link Server, so that's nice. I'll just accept the license agreement. And it will search for updates. We shouldn't find any here because this is close to uh, release date. But going forward, naturally, there could be numerous updates in here that you can apply as you're going through the installation process. We'll click Next, and at this point, we're going to start installing the Skype for Business Server 2015 core components. So once these have gone through, uh, this will give us access to the deployment wizard and the Skype for Business management shell. And it's through that deployment wizard that we're going to install the Skype for Business administrative tools or admin tools. Okay, once that's done, the deployment wizard will launch automatically. Don't be worried by the red text that's everywhere. At this point, we're just interested in this link here, Install Administrative Tools. Um, so click Next, follow the wizard through. Uh, historically, with 2010 and 2013, this was like a two to three second install. Uh, it now takes about 15 to 20 seconds to install these tools. Um, but once we're done, we'll have access to the Skype for Business Topology Builder and we'll be able to view our existing link environment from a Skype for Business Topology Builder perspective, whereas before we were looking at it using the Link Server Topology Builder. It's important on that note that once you introduce any Skype for Business components into your environment, you do everything on Skype for Business tools. So if you're going to run any management shell commands, you do them from Skype for Business management shell. So now that's done, we can go ahead and launch our Skype for Business Topology Builder. Exactly the same as previous link versions, it'll ask you to save a copy of the topology in a preferred location. So in the event you do some serious damage, you have something to revert back to. I'll just overwrite this file here. And this shouldn't look any different to what we viewed previously. Uh, we can see our Link 2013 node, which has our standard edition server in, mediation, persistent chat, and our edge server. The difference is we have a Skype for Business node there on the left-hand side now as well. So to upgrade our front-end pool, we simply right-click and choose Upgrade to Skype for Business Server. And when we do this, we'll receive a prompt that's uh, just letting us know that if we go ahead and perform that action, then it will move the server down into the Skype for Business node. Uh, but we're quite happy with that. So let's go ahead and click yes. And if we expand the Skype for Business server node now, you'll see that the standard edition server has moved down into this node and any co-located roles have followed it. Our edge server naturally remains in the 2013 node. Um, that would only move once we perform the in-place upgrade on that server, but that's fine. And from here, we can go ahead and publish the topology and follow the wizard next. And then once the publishing has completed, we'll receive the traditional to-do list link where we can open a notepad document just to see the tasks that are involved next. Okay, so if we open that one, and I'll just format that. Okay, so it's telling us you now need to go away to your front end server and stop the Skype for business services on all of them. So it's just one in this instance, and it's technically not correct because they're not Skype for Business services. They will still be link services. So we're going to go and stop all those. Um, then we're going to run setup um, from the Skype for Business media on that front end server. And then once that's completed, we'll go ahead and we'll start all the services to complete the upgrade process.
So let's go ahead and jump back over to the server where we started, our standard edition front end server. And on here, we'll just quickly launch the uh, services snap in and make sure that our link servers are all currently running. Yes, they are. So the first thing we need to do is to stop those link services. Uh, typically, you might use um, stop hyphen CS Windows service to stop your services. But the command that Microsoft actually recommends you use is disable CS computer with a hyphen scorch switch which I've executed there. Now, the reason that they ask you to do this is because not only will this stop your services, but it will remove any link membership that they hold and also disable the services as well. Now, sometimes, and not in every instance, during the upgrade process, depending on the server and the roles installed, uh, there may be a requirement for the server to restart. And in doing so, if the server restarts and these services aren't actually disabled, then they may try to restart. And if the services restart, once the server comes back up in the middle of the upgrade process, then that will cause your upgrade to fail. So once that's complete, we can exit the management shell. And if we just refresh the snap in, you can see that the services are no longer running and they are all disabled. So of the three steps that we needed to do, that's the services one done. Next, we need to run setup from the media. So I'll just launch that. And this is a similar experience to when we installed the core components and admin tools on the 8.1 client a moment ago. Once again, uh, it gives us the opportunity to check for updates, accept the license agreement. Um, we won't find any updates at this point, just as before, but we'll go ahead and click next. And at this point, the server knows that it's going to be upgraded based on the topology we published earlier. So it doesn't go to the deployment wizard. It goes straight into the upgrade process that you can see here. And right now it's going to check to make sure that all the prerequisites are met. So it's at this point that it's checking to make sure the relevant IIS hotfixes are installed, you're running the relevant SQL service packs, that you have 32 gig of free disk space available. And if you don't meet any of those prerequisite requirements, then the upgrade wizard will just stop and it will provide a message to you clearly indicating which prereq you're missing so that you can correct it and then rerun the upgrade process. Now, depending on the roles and the spec of your server, this process can take anything upwards of 20 to 30 minutes to complete. But once we're done, you can go ahead and view the logs if you desire, or simply click OK to close the dialog box. We get told that our Skype for Business upgrade completed successfully, praise the demo gods, and that we now need to go ahead and start the services on this server. So that's step three in the notepad document that we had when we published our topology. To do that, we're going to use the Skype for Business management shell. And on the previous window, before I closed it, it gave us an idea of the commandlets that we need to run. And the one we're going to run to start the services on the front end server is start hyphen CS pool. Hit return and it will ask us for the FQDN of the front end pool and return. Now the start hyphen CS pool commandlet is only applicable to front end servers and pools. So if this were any other server role such as edge or mediation, um, then you would use the start hyphen CS Windows service command instead. After two to three minutes, providing you haven't hit any problems, um, the services should all start correctly. We can exit the link management shell. And if we go ahead and open a services snap in, we can just check to make sure that all our Skype for Business services are running as expected. I'm not gonna find them under link anymore. There they are, Skype for Business, everything's running as expected nice and healthy. So that's step three as per the to-do list after we publish the topology completed. And at this stage, the upgrade process is for all intensive purposes complete. There's nothing else to do in terms of performing the upgrade. Uh, but what you would need to do at this stage is go away and make sure that everything is working as expected. So we can jump into the control panel to make sure that's working as expected. It would be savvy to review the event logs on this server to see if it's moaning or complaining about any particulars. And it would also be a good idea to jump onto a client and perform some client side testing so that you can discover any client side problems for yourself rather than your users discovering them for you. And there we go. So that's it. In place upgrade from Link Server 2013 Standard Edition to Skype for Business Server 2015 Standard Edition. Feel free to like, subscribe, and visit geckostudio.co.uk for other articles and videos.